I want to thank warmly the organizers of the Oxford Africa Conference for the opportunity to be part of this prestigious event, which is being held in this auditorium, named out of the greatest African of them all, Nelson Mandela. Since by the generosity of the Ghanaian people and with the blessing of Almighty God, I assumed the high office of President of the Republic of Ghana some 16 months ago, I've been privileged to address audiences in the three most renowned institutions of higher learning in Britain. First, at Cambridge University in November 2017, last year. And then last month in April, at the London School of Economics. And today, the icing on the cake. <laughs> At Oxford, arguably the greatest center of learning in the world. I'm indeed honored and very pleased to be back here again. I know we complain about the rest of the world treating Africa as though it was one monolithic country instead of a continent of 54 sovereign nations. But I know that the rest of the world is well able to smell out and decide on what they see as individual successes. Let me give you an example close to home. For most of you in the audience today, it is probably before your time. But in the late 1970s and up to the mid-1980s, as a result of the discovery of considerable petroleum deposits and resources, Nigeria was booming. It was the place to be. We Ghanaians, who were going through very difficult times then, would arrive at Heathrow Airport and be herded into a cage to be subjected to the full third degree by immigration. And we would look on as our Nigerian cousins would be way through with a welcome, sir, and a welcome, madam. The newspaper headlines in this country were full of Nigerians leaving or forgetting bundles of money in taxes and telephone booths. Nigerians were the preferred tenants for those who had apartments to let. You could stop by any Thomas Cook shop on any high street in this country and buy or sell Naira, the Nigerian currency. And you could do the same in New York, and I suspect in many other Western country cities. I do not need to spell out today's reality to anyone in this audience. I cite this just to make the point that the outside world is well able to tell that there are separate sovereign nations on the African continent. But when the news is not good, then Africa is treated as one entity. The lesson must be clear to us. If there's an Ebola outbreak in three West African countries, all Africans are potential carriers. If a grenade is thrown in a market in Mombasa, a travel alert will be issued to potential travelers to all Eastern and Central African countries. During the period I referred to when Nigerians were being welcomed with open arms into this country, there was a lot of instability on the African continent. And Nigeria herself, did not have a democratic government, apart from a five-year interim. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to develop Africa and get known for prosperity and opportunities, rather than poverty and despair. Respect will follow without our asking for it. The problem we have, and this would apply to most countries on the continent, is that we have already lost so much time we cannot afford a slow period of growth. We have a dynamic, restless, young population who demand and deserve the best in the world. They are not in the mood to wait for the dividends from a slow progression, as the trek across the Sahara vividly illustrates. It has become obvious to us that if we continue along the same path that we have pursued since independence, we're not likely to achieve the rapid development that we need, which is the only way we can generate jobs for our young people and hope for the future. Our continent of Africa is endowed with immense natural resources. We have every mineral that mankind lusts after, and which is required to run a modern economy. 
Our continent is in possession of 30% of the Earth's remaining mineral resources. Like many other parts of the African continent, Ghana is a country that is well endowed with many natural resources such as gold, bauxite, diamonds, oil, gas, timber, cocoa, water, fertile land, you name it, we have it. Unfortunately, if you took an honest look at the state of our nation, you would not know that we have these natural endowments. We look poor, we feel poor, and we have huge infrastructural deficits. The reason is not far to seek. Since independence, we have been stuck with the economic structure defined for our status as a colony. That is the production and export of raw materials, which puts us at the mercy of widely fluctuating commodity prices over which we have no control, and the import of manufactured commodities from the industries of the colonial power, which creates wealth and jobs there, but not at home. This economic structure has been exacerbated by mismanagement, corruption, and high fiscal deficits, which have become the hallmarks of our economy and which we finance through borrowing and foreign aid. The foreign aid quotient especially has been a debilitating factor in our efforts to develop our country. It saps our self-confidence and undermines the dignity and respect that will propel us to prosperity. The very sad part of the aid dependency is that it was never intended to help us develop to stand on our own. It must be clear to all of us that the economic transformation we aspire will not come through aid. Sixty years is a long time to have been trying something, and I believe it is time to accept that aid will not take us to the status of a developed nation. It is also obvious that many of those who have been giving aid no longer do so with any enthusiasm. It shows in the many ruses that have been devised to make the aid money remain in the donor nation instead of the recipient nation. It is time to relieve the aid donors of their burden. It is not a healthy setup. It is not a healthy setup. It is bad for both the giver and the receiver. Sixty years after independence, we should embrace and move to a Ghana beyond aid, indeed an Africa beyond aid. It bears repeating that I'm not disclaiming aid, nor am I looking a gift horse in the mouth. I certainly do not want to embark on any ideological path to inflict poverty on us. I will not sing to a refrain of, I am poor and proud. There's no pride or dignity in poverty. There's no dignity in having hungry children or mothers dying in childbirth. And there's no dignity in drinking dirty or polluted water. I mention these in particular because they happen to be the sectors usually populated by the aid agencies and NGOs. Ladies and gentlemen, I suggest the no self-respecting nation should abdicate these sectors to aid agencies or NGOs. We should set our minds to a deliberate qualitative change in all aspects of our lives, especially in the structure of our economy, the nature of our infrastructure, the education of our young people, and acquisition of skills. It is time to abandon the economic structure that was desired to serve us when we were a colony. We must add value to the many commodities that we export. We're embarking upon an ambitious program in Ghana that we are calling the One District, One Factory Initiative, which is to serve as the basis for the rapid industrialization of our country and providing jobs for the many young unemployed. Youth unemployment poses the biggest security threat to our country. When most of these factories get going, the main activity will be value addition and food processing. The One District, One Factory Initiative goes hand in hand with our determination to add value to our natural resources. We are about to establish by Act of Parliament 
a Ghana Integrated Bauxite and Aluminum Development Authority, which will manage all the bauxite resources of the country and whose purpose will be to drive the establishment of the entire value chain of our bauxite resources so that the process of transformation of those resources from bauxite to alumina to aluminium will take place in Ghana and thereby lead to the creation of the significant numbers of derivative industries that are associated with aluminum. And aluminum, as we all know, is the metal of the future. We have the same plans for the development of our considerable iron ore and manganese deposits. The development of a steel industry is crucial for the prospects of a successful industrial economy. I would like to conclude with one important observation. People ask, Ghana and indeed Africa beyond aid is meant to be more than a slogan. It is meant to propel us into the frame of mind that will quicken our pace of development. It is meant to change our mindset from one of dependency and living on handouts to one of achieving our destiny. It is meant to put us in charge of our own affairs and make us truly independent. Above all, Ghana Beyond Aid will give us the respect and dignity we deserve. If I have touched a few hearts among you today to make you start thinking of Africa in a new light, then maybe there's some hope yet for rhetoric. I thank you all for your attention.